because it was something out of a horror movie the way it was his the condition of his body call curtis exposed an unlicensed funeral operation inside a stockton church tonight a case handled there is appalling even seasoned professionals i'm still processing it curtis i'm, I'm still processing these pictures that you've showed us the state calls it gross negligence Yet tonight, Cole Curtis is here with the punishment that many are calling shocking. Curtis. Well, when a funeral professional takes possession of your loved one, they're supposed to care for the body, preserve it through embalming or refrigeration until it's buried or cremated. This family says their loved one was so decomposed within days of his death, they couldn't have an open casket service. Just 25 years old, Lamarck Otis Day Jr., a newlywood and father, suddenly died of a seizure in September. His family turned to Cooley's funeral home in Stockton. All of my relatives, we have gone to Cooley's. Dying on a Friday at the hospital. Three days later on Monday, mother-in-law Angela Ely Hale says she and her daughter went to Boggs Track Church to make the funeral arrangements for an open casket funeral. But the funeral worker told them it wasn't possible because of the condition of Lamarck's body. I said, well, what's wrong with the body? He said the tissue gas caused the body to swell. She demanded seeing him, but the worker said his body was off site. I said, well, can I go there? And they was like, no, you can't go there, but we can have the body here tomorrow. She returned the next day. When you could smell the odor when they brought him in. And then they took him to the front of the chapel and they unzipped the bag for us to see. And it was horrific. Angela says Lamarck looked like a monster. How could someone do this? So unbelievable, she snapped a picture too graphic to show. It was like, like something out of a horror movie. It really was. It was something out of a horror movie, the, way it was his, the condition of his body. What she didn't know at the time, the Jesse E. Cooley Jr. funeral home they thought they were hiring actually closed the prior month after a family dispute. Stephen Cooley, seen here in a Stockton record profile, kept the funeral home's phone number and illegally funneled business across town to Boggs Track Church, where he's the pastor. But that facility is not a licensed funeral home. The church wasn't, uh, wasn't adequate, didn't have adequate refrigeration. Cooley, who is a licensed funeral director, admitted to us the church location handled more remains than it had refrigeration. State law says a body must be embalmed or refrigerated within 24 hours of death. Were bodies sitting there unembalmed for days? <laughs> of course not. No, I'd be in jail. We brought our entire file, including those graphic photos, to the faculty at the American River College funeral program. I'm still processing it. Curtis, I'm, I'm still processing these pictures that you've showed us. I it's mean, appalling. It's, a, it's appalling. I, I'm a professional, and I was shocked by it. Terrible. Three licensed funeral directors with a collective 60 plus years of experience. Was this body refrigerated? No. How certain are you? I, I'm, I would put my license on the line for that. It's their opinions Cooley should have been stripped of his license and charged with a crime. You're, you're destroying a body. I mean, it's still a person. The State Funeral Bureau investigated the case and cited Cooley, saying, you failed to notify L. Day's family of the decedent's condition within a reasonable amount of time, thereby allowing the remains to be in the condition that prevented the family from having a viewing service. That being the reason that the citation was administered to the funeral home doesn't even really scratch the surface of what's really going on there. The fine, $750. I just can't believe that it's that low. It's pretty shocking to me that somebody could be getting away with this kind of stuff now. The state has refused to make anyone with direct knowledge of this investigation available to us for an interview. We want to get answers for our viewers. At this public hearing, I press for more info tied to this investigation. The and Funeral I Bureau's Executive Director, Gina Sanchez, suggested we, we talk directly. And put down an email or a phone number, then we can talk directly, because I know we've been going through a third party, so yes. you're always welcome to call me directly. Okay. I appreciate that. All right. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you for coming. But after that promise, meeting, she backed out, saying she would complaint. not talk with we me. Do have this, have this needs to come out so that something can be done about it. That's my son-in-law and my daughter. Angela says seeing her son-in-law's decomposing body haunts her nearly a year later.
You know, I won't, think, I won't be sketched in my mind that handsome young man that my son-in-law was. The last memories I have is what I saw when they showed me his body. I just don't want to see anybody else's family to have to go through this. She calls it ridiculous. The fine was just $750. She says her daughter never got to say a proper goodbye to her own husband. As we've reported, the state did find Cooley for the unlicensed funeral operation for having bodies inside that church and cremated remains in a U-Haul. We asked the state how many bodies, how many loved ones, and they still won't tell us. We have that part of our investigation on CBS13.com. Well, I know we're wondering, mm -hmm. lots of viewers are wondering as well, is Cooley still operating? Well, we're not 100% sure. Uh, he still has an active funeral director's license, and when we reached out to him this week, he would not answer my questions involving this case, saying all he wanted to talk about was forgiveness. Uh, he then hung up on me, called me back, and then hung up on me again. So what are the next steps for this poor family? Well, the family has been talking with an attorney, so we'll see if anything happens there. But we have a lot of questions for the state that they still have not answered. You bet. All yeah. right, Curtis, thanks so much for that you report. Bet. All right, if you have something you want me to investigate, let me know about it. Go to CBS13.com slash call Curtis and fill out our form.